All right, man, peace. So just when the Colin Kaepernick narrative was starting to die down, of course, they had to reinvigorate it by presenting footage of him at a practice facility throwing passes in his normal awkward style. I don't understand how he could expect an NFL team to possibly want to sign him when he has an open case against the NFL. That is how you know that this is all for show. This is just to keep his name at the forefront of the minds of many of his internet revolutionary followers, many of the so-called blacks who are stuck down the woke rabbit hole that he helped dig for them at the behest of his handler, Ness Nitty. And that takes me to the point of this video. Because one of the sportscasters actually uses that term, handler, for Miss Ness Nitty. So, seems like as if the conventional sports media is finally starting to catch up to the sentiments that I've been touching on in regards to Mr. Colin Kaepernick ever since this narrative first came to the forefront. It's very obvious to me that he's a pawn, a monarch athlete, an anarchist, an agent of chaos, and really just a tool to promote Marxism in the NFL, a.k.a. Equality, as they call it, which is just a tool of the bankers to try to destabilize society. That's all it's about. And as you can see, he's dressed in the all black for Saturn, who is the god of the entertainment industry, Saturn slash Pan slash Bacchus, all talking about the same entities. But anyway, they're going to talk about I'm going to chime in. Let's move to Colin Kaepernick, who was spotted working out in Houston today, but no teams were in attendance. Kyle Hurd. You think we'll see a Kaepernick comeback this year? Before Colin Cowherd responds, once again, you are Colin Kaepernick. You're already on record as stating that you have a book coming out detailing your issues with the NFL. You're already on record as stating that you have a court case against the NFL. You're already on record as stating that you have no desire to come back to the NFL. So why the change of heart all of a sudden? Unless it was truly at the behest of your handler, Miss Ness Nitty. As you can see in the upper right hand corner of the screen, you see the handle at Ness Nitty and the Bluebird. As I've told you guys already, the Twitter handle or the Twitter emblem of the Bluebird is an allusion to MK Ultra, which at one time was known as Project Bluebird. You'll oftentimes see certain monarch butterflies, or I should say MK assets, that have the Bluebird tattooed on them, like Mr. Johnny Depp. But just getting back to Colin Kaepernick, when you look at his history, there's no doubt in my mind that he's a pawn who was strategically placed in the NFL. One of many um, MK assets that were placed in the NFL to hopefully promote discord and to turn the NFL into a woke league. That's been my stance from the very start of this whole situation, this whole narrative, this 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 theatricality where they're trying to utilize certain Hegelian tactics to make the NFL conform to what they like society to be. They already have the NBA firmly in their grasp. The NFL has been a little bit outside of their control, outside of their jurisdiction. And they were hoping to use Colin Kaepernick and Michael Bennett to re, you know, recalibrate the NFL. And, and this is amazing to me. I mean, when you look at Colin Kaepernick's history, this is a guy who was raised by a very affluent Caucasian family. And now he runs around Harlem telling little black children about how to be black. And how they should feel about quote unquote being black. I guess he wants back in the NFL because he's ran out of old clothes to give to ex convicts and act, act as if he's quote unquote giving back to the black community. So he needs more attention. Or maybe the book pre sales are not as good as he thought they were going to be. No, although if he just practices, the people who like him will promote it as such. To exactly, sir. That's the point. He knows he's not going back to the NFL. This is to keep his name alive as a so-called martyr for the quote-unquote cause. And that cause is not for actual empowerment of so-called black people. It's for Marxism. Please understand he's a woman worshiper, as most quote-unquote pro-blacks are. Most pro-black men are woman worshipers. Once again, the all-black is for Marxism, a.k.a. Luciferianism. That's all it's ever been about with him. To get back at the NFL. Yes, and looking at that highlight, I hate to say this, but again, where's the coach? Because that's what Kaepernick needs help on. Kaepernick just throwing the ball with that awkward, bad throwing motion. Absolutely. Guy has a terrible throwing motion. Motion isn't going to impress anybody. And this whole thing planted and given to the media to put it out there to, so that everybody can celebrate Kaepernick. This is, should be filed under things Kaepernick should have been doing last year, Alex. 
Well, he didn't have to do it last year because he had no real intentions on playing in the NFL last year. Right now, his storyline is starting to die down, so they had to dig him up out of his grave and throw a video on the internet so that they could bring back that spirit of chaos. Please understand something. Once again, just going back into Kaepernick's background. He's raised by an affluent Caucasian family. His actual parentage is dubious at best. He goes to the University of Nevada where he becomes a quote-unquote Kappa, Alpha Psi, Kappa as in Kaepernick, Alpha Psi, which makes him a member of the quote-unquote Divine Nine, a.k.a. a Boule Negro. Boule, they just act as advisors to the king, the king being the quote-unquote Caucasian elite, i.e. skull and bones and other higher-level Luciferians. He comes into the NFL and is pretty much a hedonist and a me-first person until he comes across Miss Ness Nitty, who really only came into his acquaintance because first she was dealing with his teammate Alden Smith, who himself seems to be a, uh, a paranoid schizophrenic, uh, program multiple psychological disorders, and also a Luciferian himself. I'll probably do an epilogue after this video just to show certain things or just to um, provide some context to some of the things that I'm saying. Ness Nitty herself comes out of the San Diego area, which, as we all know, has a very large naval base and military presence. She claims to be from Egypt, but actually her parents seem to come from Saudi Arabia. As we all know, Saudi Arabia is just a pawn for uh, Britain and America. All of a sudden, he uh, becomes confederate with her and, and he becomes super woke and grows his afro out. And, and now he's fighting for a quote unquote social injustice. Meanwhile, she's in the background holding the strings that she's not even a so-called black woman. Isn't that interesting? He decides he's going to sit out on the national anthem. And then a former military Green Beret by the name of Nate Boyer, who himself has to have some type of higher level connections, just based off of the way that he got into the NFL, talks to Colin Kaepernick in secret and gets him to start bowing down on one knee, which is a Masonic ritual. Please understand something. Uh, the Kappa Alpha size, and I'm sure one of these Boulay cats is going to jump in the comments and get upset by this. But the Kappa Alpha size, they venerate Thoth or Tahuti. Uh, they venerate the, what they call the Delphic Shrine, which is in veneration of Apollo. Apollo is the Greek name for Heru. Okay? Tahuti or Thoth is just another name for Kush or Chaos. All right, the, the originator of what they call the hermetic principles or the hermetic philosophies. As above, so below, meaning create chaos to establish your own order. That is what Kaepernick has been and is continued to be used for. That is why the NFL kicked him out and that is why they will be wise to keep him out. He has no solutions. All he is intent on bringing is disorder. And they're acting as if they want to get him back into the NFL because they see his storyline dying down. When I say they, I mean his handlers. Ness Nitty and most likely the people in the background who are operating him. Because he's nothing but a damn Manchurian candidate. Black Lives Matter pawn. A.K.A. a, um, a foot soldier for George Soros and the international bankers. Why wasn't he doing this last year? He, he, this feels like, you know, again... I, he's confused. Like, yes, sir. Very confused. And I'm happy that you guys are finally starting to see the things that I've been saying for the last year. And certain people might say, "Oh, well, what are you talking about? International bankers and this and that." You have to, you, you have to chase the trail. You have to trace things back. A lot of people they only look at what they see on television and they just accept it at face value. Colin Kaepernick is an agent of the so-called Black Lives Matter movement, which is just intent on. Establishing not just a black matriarchy, but a what they call a, a sapphic cabal or really just a lesbian sisterhood of rulership over the so-called black community. That's why when you look when you look at most of these so-called pro-black movements, they're all Marxist. The civil rights movement was Marxist. The Black Panthers were Marxist. It's all Marxism. That's why they push for this full equality, which really just is about emasculating the black man. And trying to destroy the black boy. Make sure as the black boy grows that he accepts being marginalized more and more. When he's a small child, we can show him attention. But as he grows, he has to take the background. Play the background more and more. Your only job is, is to serve the quote-unquote black matriarchy, the so-called sapphic rulership. 
All the rulers of the so-called Black Lives Matter movement are all lesbian or homosexual. And the Black Lives Matter movement, as we know, is funded by Mr. George Soros, who operates what they call, if I remember correctly, is called the Open Society. One of you brothers can correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm trying to remember what the name of his front organization is. That's why I tell you, brothers, you always have to check the source. Okay? Also pay attention to Mr. Sean Puff Daddy Combs and the elite, quote-unquote, the elite's attempts to make him a uh, partial owner of an NFL franchise. Understand something. When I say elite, I'm, I'm not speaking in these vague terms that you might hear other people speak. And when I say the elite... We're talking about high-level Luciferians that are actually in control of the monetary system. It's all about the money. The flow of money is how they control the flow of people. So whether it be oil magnets or, or high-level bankers, which is what George Soros is, they're the ones who think that they can determine how people think. Because in, in return for them allowing you to use the currency that they produce, they want you to think a certain way. That's what it's really about. And all those people, they venerate the quote-unquote Baphomet a.k.a. the ideologies of Kush, Nimrod, and Semiramis. Right? When you bring those three forces together, or those three entities together, that's where you have the so-called Baphomet. They want to bring together the, the opposing genders, male and female. They want to bring together the so-called opposite races, black and white. This was known as alchemy. Okay? An alchemist believes in dissolving two two forms or two substances and then combining them while recreating them but anyway let's get back to this issue here are you in or are you out are you talking or are you not do you want to play I, I don't know i mean to me if you really want to play let me tell you what happened. then you told a press conference and say i want back in the league this was put out by his girlfriend his handler oh did you hear what mr jason whitlock said mr jason whitlock Welcome to the channel, nigga. <laughs> Let me rewind this. And I a play. Let me tell you what happened. Then you told a press conference and say, I want back in the league. This was put out by his girlfriend, his handler. And I guarantee you. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. You guys are finally starting to figure it out over a year later. Good job, sir. Tell you what happened is they're both laying around going, did you just see how much money <laughs> Case Keenum got? How much money Sam Bradford got? McCown got 10 million, blah, 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 blah. Let's put a video out, baby. Absolutely. And she probably didn't say it like that. She probably touched him on the, on the back of his ear and readjusted his microchip. And she said, you will get up and throw footballs and I'm going to film it. We're going to submit the video on one of these social media sites. And we're going to make your followers think that you still want to play football. Because we're running out of money. And the people are not as interested in you as they were a year ago. So get up. And, she, and he said, yes, my master. <laughs> in all reality, though, brothers, you never follow behind a liberal woman in, in any, any way, shape or form. You don't follow behind the liberal woman. That's why you have to scrutinize your woman and you have to scrutinize yourself even harder than you scrutinize your woman. Like Kaepernick, he fell down the woke rabbit hole. But I'm sure that she already knew that he was an asset. That's why she knew that she had to deal with Alder Smith first to get to him. But that's a whole other story for another day. <laughs> and here you go. No, I, and they hand it to some reporter and it's news. Anytime you're a quarterback and it's news that you're working out, that's a bad sign. All right. I agree. But to me, it's not necessarily that bad a sign more than it is the fact that the Colin Kaepernick narrative is nearing its end and they're not sure what to do with him. That's why I've told you brothers on previous videos, it would not surprise me if they staged some type of assassination. Allegedly. Allegedly. But just watch for that. Alright? Because many of these people become worth more dead than alive. Okay? And if you think he's a martyr now, he'd be even a bigger martyr if they were to stage some type of assassination. Allegedly. So, please just learn how to connect the dots. That is very important. When, when um, trying to evaluate many of these storylines and these narratives, they tell you what's going on without telling you. They show you. That's why he's out there in the all black. That's why this video was, was put on Miss Nesnady's channel as opposed to his channel. She is his handler. Now, Whitlock is using the term handler more as, more as, a, more as someone who is just controlling 
when I say handler, I mean she has his keys. Like he's he's like her, you know, he's like her puppy dog. Believe me. All right. But anyway, peace. All right, man, peace. So I decided to make an epilogue for the video that I did on Mr. Colin Kaepernick and the public workout that he filmed that was allegedly supposed to convey to the viewing audience and to the NFL that he was still interested in being a quarterback for a team in the National Football League. I'm already on record as stating for a very long time, I've been stating this, that Colin Kaepernick is a pawn, that he is an MK asset, meaning what? He's under mind control. He's a monarch athlete. And that his handler is his girlfriend, Ness Nitty. For people who may be new to my channel, I've expounded on it in the past. I have little doubt of what he is. And in order for me to add context to that sentiment, I decided to create this little epilogue, just giving you some background on Miss Nessa Diab. According to her, she claims that as a child, she was in Saudi Arabia during the time of the first Gulf War, around the age of four or five. And then she was brought to America by her family, where she was raised in the San Diego region. I'm, all, I'm already on record as stating that anyone from San Diego or who has affiliations in the San Diego area or in the Bay Area who becomes famous or is exalted in any degree in regards to societally is under suspicion as far as I'm concerned because I know that those are hotbeds uh, for the military and for mind control, especially the Bay Area. That's a hotbed for mind control in regards to some of the higher level institutions, particularly Berkeley, which is where Nessa Dieb happened to attend college. She has not verified how she got the money to go there. She uh, allegedly got a degree from Berkeley in mass communications. And eventually she has worked her way up through the hip hop world, through the pop music world. Some people may be familiar with her work on MTV on quote unquote girl code where she advocates for women being to be quite frank with you sluts and whores even though supposedly she's a Muslim and somehow she was able to get into contact with Mr. Colin Kaepernick but we're going to go through that sequentially I just want to show you guys some photos of Miss Nessa Diab because she's going to show you who she's actually working for and what she's actually about I've stated this on my channel in the past. Oftentimes, MK handlers are also MK assets themselves. They're given certain directives to contact people in entertainment, to bring them into the fold, to watch them, to moderate them, to monitor them. People like Amber Rose, Black China, a lot of these so-called uh, Insta mo Instagram models who become associated with these athletes or who become famous in their own right, you'll see them pop up on these reality shows. You know why? Because they're monarch programmed. Oftentimes they'll get married to a famous athlete and they'll become as famous as the athlete. Oftentimes it's because they're monarch programmed. And that brings us to Miss Nessa Diab, who first came into contact with Colin Kaepernick through his teammate, Alden Smith and you may be familiar with Alden Smith he was a former defensive end for the San Francisco 49ers who was on his way quite frankly to being one of the great defensive ends of all time until he got derailed due to some mental fragility but we're going to cover that in a moment I want you guys to pay attention to this photo right here this is a photo that Nessa Diab took for publicity and for those of you who are not familiar with the ancient religions, the pagan religions, oftentimes the quote unquote queen of heaven or the mother goddess will be depicted sitting in a throne of lions. There'll be lions on both sides of her throne. Whether you look at Aset or Sibel or any of the mother goddesses, they oftentimes will be depicted sitting in a throne where they were on either side surrounded by lions. And that was the mother goddess altar as the warrior goddess. Also, please understand that oftentimes both her son and her husband, that being Cush and Nimrod, 
will be depicted as lions. So that's why she would oftentimes, in depictions, be accompanied by two lions. For those of you who are familiar with, uh, who are familiar with the goddesses of Kemet, you're, you're aware of Sekhmet, the lion-headed goddess. But anyway, let's get to the point. Let's do a close-up of Miss Nesniti and the throne that she's sitting in. You'll see here that she's sitting in the lion throne and she's making a hand gesture with her left hand. She does not want to make it too obvious that she's utilizing the Manu Cornuto devil hand sign. So instead of making the hand sign with her index finger and her pinky, she makes it with her index finger and her ring finger. Why is that? Because once again, the index finger is the finger for Jupiter and the ring finger is the finger for Apollo, the sun god. Gold is oftentimes used as a symbol for the sun god. But let's prove, let me prove my point a little further. Please remember that she's sitting in the lion throne. Now this is on the website sourcememory.net and they're going to tell you point blank. It says thousands of years later the Anatolian goddess Kibel or Sibel, oftentimes her name is also spelled is depicted on a throne flanked by lions or with lions. Let's scroll down. The Canaanite goddess is also shown seated between lions, which are now winged cherubim with lion's bodies and women's heads. Phoenicians brought this deity to southwestern Iberia. For those of you who don't know, Iberia is the Spain-Portugal region. She is an alabaster ritual vessel. When libation is poured into her, the liquid shoots out from her breasts into the basin she holds. Scroll down. Goddesses of this type spread far and wide as the Greek and Roman world adopts veneration of the Mater Deum, Mother of the Gods. 7th century, identified as Greek, but maybe Italian, no provenance given. Kebel, originally a Phrygian goddess, was also venerated by the Thracians who carved many reliefs of her enthroned with her lions. Scroll down. It's another image. After consulting the Sibylline Oracle, Rome officially adopted veneration of Kebel during the emergency of Hannibal's march through Italy. Her sacred meteorite was brought from Asia Minor and installed in a Metron mother shrine in Rome. Now, for those of you brothers who may be familiar, when you read the scriptures, Acts the 19th chapter, it details the, the story of the meteorite and its association with the goddess Diana. Why is that? Because once again, brothers, the mother goddess is talking about the mother of Nimrod. All these various mother goddesses are not different. They're all different names, different aspects for the same female deity who has been venerated throughout time. Because she was associated with the apostasy against the Most High. That's why, you see, that's why you see her depicted the same way in every culture. Now when it speaks about the meteorite, that's the same meteorite that is venerated in Mecca. When they talk about the, the black stone that they kiss, that is the same meteorite that's associated with the mother goddess. Okay? When they want, also... In that region of Mecca, right there affiliated with the quote-unquote Kaaba stone, which is just the cube of Saturn, is the Shiva Lingam, which represents the penis of Asar, also known as the penis of Shiva. But that's a, that's a whole other video for another day. Well, let's scroll down. In the Roman era, the goddess was increasingly depicted in a chariot drawn by lions, with the shamanic hand drum that had been her symbol for centuries. Cabell continued to have a long reach in Asia as well. This silver and gold disc comes from Iconum in Afghanistan and shows Cabell and another goddess, perhaps Nike, in the lion chariot with sun, moon, and Venus in Thesky and a Persian magus at right. So once again, the goddess Nike is the goddess of victory. That's a wartime goddess. It's also the goddess of sports. 
All right. So all these major corporations, they show their they show their association, their affinity for the mother goddess, the sun god, the moon god, etc. These are the same gods that are prohibited against in scripture. So oftentimes when you hear these people talk about or oh, the Bible is the white man's book or the Bible has been changed or you know the Bible gets all of its teachings from these other cultures. No, it does not. These are people who don't know what they're talking about. Because the same gods that get prohibited by the Bible get exalted in these other cultures. It's just that people don't understand nuance. So let's scroll down a little bit. A more recent classical style fountain sculpture of Gebel and her lions. Why am I going through all this? To show you that this character, Nessa Diab, if that's even her real name, it probably is. But this character of Nessa Diab venerates the mother goddess and casts herself as the mother goddess and i'm going to show you some more proof of that all right so now we're back on nessa diab i just wanted to go from her photo to some substantiation and now back to her photo once again just to place everything in proper context as you can see she's casting herself as the mother goddess once again, brothers, it's very important that you're cognizant of these different images because they have an energy behind them. They have a vibration behind them. Once again, brothers, it's very important that you're cognizant of the various images that are presented for you to ingest mentally. Because there is a method to their madness why they place these various plants in these different industries to promote these energies. Because we're coming near the end and we're coming to the point now where they're going to come out from behind the curtain and just be upfront with it. And it's getting more and more blatant, as you can see. But people oftentimes think that someone is just sitting in a throne or just sitting in a chair. It's meant to convey a certain sentiment. And they're telling you things without telling you. It's, it's, it's almost as if, for those who are uninformed, the Most High has given Satan certain directives on how to go about his work so that the people who are meant to see it can understand what's going on and can inform those who cannot see it. Every time a problem is created, they also must create the remedy for that problem. That's how things work on a, on a three-dimensional level or even approaching a fourth-dimensional level, which is a spiritual level. All right, but let's, let's carry on. Now, this is another photo of Miss Nessa Diab, which shows you once again that she has embraced the left hand path, that she is a venerator, a worshiper of Heru. She's showing you the left eye and we're going to we're going to go further in to prove that, no, this is not just a regular photo, that she has been initiated into the Luciferian rites. She's very aware of what she's of what she's doing. And yes, for those of you who are wondering that is what the symbol of Miss Lisa Left Eye Lopez was all about. She also was an initiate. Okay? Everyone that you see on television who get to a high level, they understand the craft. They have been indoctrinated. They have been brought in to help assist in the, in the quote-unquote great work. To help finish what was first started by Kush and Nimrod and Semiramis. But let's further prove it, what I'm, what I'm talking about. All right, so now this is Miss Nessa Diab. Pay very close attention to what she has chosen to use as the emblem to represent herself. Just looking at her pose, you see she has the right hand up, left hand down, so it's as above, so below. But look at the lower right hand corner of this caption here, of this photo. Look at what they have here to represent her. Let me do a little close up. You see that there? The pyramid with the right eye the all-seeing right eye for hathor the mother goddess you see her name stylized as nessa and the ssa basically look like three sixes that are written backwards this person that's nitty is an asset that's why as i brought out she was allowed to go speak at the un to supposedly speak on uh, female empowerment for the ms corporation okay so brothers, be very aware and alert when, you, when you're talking about these high-level DJs, 
They're part of the craft as well, man. Okay? Very, very clear, very obvious. But let's go further. Here's Nessa Diab when she was dating, quote unquote, Mr. Alden Smith, that time a star defensive end for the San Francisco 49ers. He came out of the University of Missouri, if I remember correctly, and he basically set the NFL on fire his first couple of seasons until eventually he got indoctrinated into Luciferianism by this female right here. And the proof that he was indoctrinated into Luciferianism by hers, you can look at the hand sign that he's doing. For those of you who don't know, that, that hand sign does not stand for West Side. Okay? <laughs> that hand sign does not stand for West Side. That, that is to show that you are an adherent to the Father God and the Son. Or the Father God and His Son. That being Saturn and Apollo. Remember the middle finger is for Saturn. The ring finger is for Apollo. When you intertwine them together... That is to show your adherence. That does not stand for West Side. The reason why Tupac was used to bring forth the use of that hand sign was because Tupac was a pawn, for those of you who don't know. He was a Luciferian himself. I'll probably be doing a video on that in the near future. Remember, the number one thing that Tupac was, was an actor. Okay? He was an actor. And Tupac reminds me a lot of that film, The Talented Mr. Ripley. He was someone who was frustrated at the fact that he wasn't born a certain way. He wasn't born a certain someone. So he made himself into the person that he wished he always was. And life started to imitate art. And he was a pawn and they got rid of him. But point being is this, they utilized him to bring forth that hand sign to the masses to make them think that it stood for West Side and had a lot of so-called black men trying to claim a coast in a country that's, that, that, they don't, that they don't really have any stake in. And Tupac precipitated a very ignorant and silly mindset that the vestiges of still exist today. Point being is this, Mr. Alden Smith, he learned this hand sign going to some of the temple meetings that I'm sure he, he followed her into. Her whole purpose was to use him to get to Kaepernick. Kaepernick was the guy that she was dispatched to utilize because they already knew that he was a sleeper, meaning what? He's a monarch athlete. And by the way, Mr. Alden Smith right now is out of the NFL and still suffering from a series of mental breakdowns. And the last that I heard from him, he got caught up in a domestic violence dispute with his so-called fiance, a Caucasian female that he's known for three months and whose parents are allegedly in the medical field. So it's highly probable, in my view, that Alden Smith was ferried over to that female to monitor him, to act as his wife so that she could watch over him because he's still an asset. I'm sure that her parents are most likely psychiatrists who know how to handle monarch slaves. Uh, it is what it is. Here's another photo of Mr. Alden Smith throwing up the devil horn sign. You have to wonder, where do these athletes learn these hand signs from? Clearly, there are temples or churches or some type of training centers that are set up adjacent to many of these professional sports teams, practice facilities or training grounds. So that these athletes can become associated with or acclimated to learning about Luciferianism or what they might call alternate religions or certain forms of quote unquote spiritual worship. Because they're all learning these hand signs and they're learning them from somewhere, whether it be the females that are sent to them. Or certain people that are strategically placed into their lives so that they can get a greater understanding of who they're going to have to venerate if they intend on being celebrities or stars. Because just like Christ said that you have to walk through a straight gate, in order to get fame in this world, you have to walk through a straight gate. Believe it or not. So Mr. Alden Smith, I, I doubt that we'll hear from him again unless it's something catastrophic. Hopefully for him that won't be the case. 
but in order for a a plant to get to her target there is going to be collateral damage and they really don't give a damn they already had Kaepernick marked to be to be an agent of chaos for the NFL and she's the one playing the background it is what it is but I'm sure that this is not the last that we're going to hear about this situation or this story Okay, so now this is the Time Magazine function to celebrate the 100 most influential people of the year. As you can see, Colin Kaepernick is there with his handler, a.k.a. his girlfriend, Nessa Diab. And Colin's looking to his right at the two Muslim women. Why is that? Because allegedly, supposedly, Nessa Diab has gotten Colin Kaepernick to convert to Islam, which would add to his brand as a quote-unquote agent of chaos agent of discord as we all know the nfl is a sports league that really caters towards the caucasian conservatives in middle america obviously it has appeal for numerous demographics in america but they cater to conservative caucasians located in middle america how do we know that because the nfl goes out of its way to associate itself with the military and when you're trying to associate yourself with the military it's clear that you want to appeal to a certain demographic that normally is conservative because most quote-unquote liberals are anti-war or at least act as if they are and as we know most quote-unquote minorities in america associate with liberalism more than being a so-called conservative so that's how we know that for colin kaepernick to decide that he's going to convert to islam it's very clear to me that he pretty much does whatever nessa diab instructs him to do because that's part of his programming she has his keys and to be quite frank with you i'm not even sure if colin kaepernick is actually a so-called black man he is supposedly an orphan allegedly he comes from a broken home and a single caucasian mother who gave him up for adoption allegedly his father is a so-called black african man who knows if that's the real story who knows? He may be an Arab himself, just, just playing games. But I guess we'll find out somewhere down the line. point of this epilogue is just to show brothers that, yes, Ness Nitty or Nessa Diab is much more than she alleges to be. And her storyline is not going to end anytime soon unless she just gets so sloppy that they say, you know what, let's just put a nice little ball on this one. But anyway, peace.